Yama is a steya. And we got to remember that a steya means non-stealing. Non-stealing, that means do not take anything that is not yours. Physical, material things, emotional, because it's important not to take, you know, advantage of anybody's emotions. And or spiritual, spiritual. T don't take advantage of people in a spiritual way. Don't use spirituality as a as a um, front for for pretending. You, you know, you're selling your own message under it, and don't you know you're not supposed to take that because you take their what you take is their innocence when you do it in a spiritual way, right? And don't take advantage of anybody's secrets when you're given a secret. You're entrusted with a integritous trust there. And if you give away that secret, then you're actually taking an emotional piece of another person. And, you know, and that's not what you're supposed to be doing. So you have to be real careful with that. Do not hoard, right? Don't keep more than you need for yourself. Now, that doesn't mean that you have to live in poverty. That means that when you see that you've got a little bit too much, after all your needs are met and, you know, and maybe some of your desires, then you have to start tithing, giving back in some form or another, right? And then it's really important that you do not, that if you do this, it will, you understand that this is going to create a perpetual, a perpetual cycle of lack. And then do not desire what is not yours. It sort of matches what the Bible says. Thou shalt not covet thy neighbor's wife, right? It, it basically, what it means is the same thing. It's don't desire what other people have. Be content with what you have, but that doesn't mean you can't want more or move forward to get more. It just means be content with what you have and take the steps necessary to get what it is you want. But don't, don't look at her and, and, and um, desire what she wants because that creates jealousy and that creates envy and that creates greed and we don't want that, right? And if you do that, you're gonna be so out of balance in your second chakra. Now, the second chakra is the center of money, the center of material wealth, the center of sexuality, right? And so all of that money has a lot to do with your sexual energy, especially a male. The more abundant you feel, the more sexually invigorated you usually are. There's a direct correlation, right? And when you give up your desire for things, well, you know, you open yourself up for more abundance, right? Think of it in material things. It's always easier to think of it in material things. I always tell people, and I, you know, I always tell my children too, that if they don't use a dress anymore, if you've had a dress or some sort of clothing item that you have not used in at least six months, it's time to move it out because you are blocking your self from receiving more, right? If it's time for you to want to get a new boyfriend, but you're holding on to the memories of your old boyfriend, guess what? You're not open to receiving because you're holding on to what you had. You're desiring it, right? And let me give you a perfect example. I was talking to this young man. He, he came to me and he said, okay, my girlfriend broke up with me. I swear I'm going to die. I can't eat. I can't sleep. I can't. And then I said, you know, you tell me a little bit more about this. He goes, I, I don't want anybody else. I only want her. I, you know, and he was so stuck on wanting her that he just wanted her so badly that that created a total imbalance and the next thing you know he tried to kill her 
because she was out with somebody else, right? So, so it drives, that desire drives you to do things that you don't really intend to do, right? And that's what we have to be careful of. And it can come all the way. Estea tells us non-stealing, right? That can come as simple as, how many of you guys have ever taken something from somewhere but not really thought it was stealing, but just figured, well, I need this, and they have so much of that, so I'm just going to take it, or I'm going to borrow it, okay? And it happens to us all the time. Let's, let's go all the way back to sticky pads, sticky notepads, okay? So how many of us have maybe taken sticky notepads from somewhere or a pen from somewhere? And we have to be careful with that. Because what we're doing is telling the universe, I'm in lack, and you're telling the universe, I'm not going to ever be able to afford this on my own, so I'm taking it. And the universe says, your wish is my command. I will give you more opportunity to feel that lack, to feel the need that you have to steal. That's why if you take a look, that people that steal, they don't just steal once. Have you known anybody that steals once? No. Because they are giving, they're giving this message out that it is a perpetual cycle. It's a perpetual cycle. You have to break the cycle, right? I didn't understand it. My mom used to always tell me, be satisfied with what you with what you have. In my mind, I would always get angry when she said that because I thought what she was telling me was that you can't want to be more. You can't want more than what you have. And that's not what she was telling me. She was telling me to be happy and content with what I had right now and take and not wish that I had what she had, but that I could take steps to get more than I than I had right there to desire a little bit more, to desire to be better, you know. But the word desire is the critical key. It, it sort of tells us to want, right? And the more you want something, the less you're going to get it. Because wanting comes from lack. Why do we want something? What do you think? Why would you want something? Because you don't have it. Because you don't have it. Exactly. You want something because you don't have it. So you're coming from the not having this. Does that make sense? So you've got to get out of the wanting it, wanting so badly, and maybe change it to... I would love to have that, and I'm going to take the next step to try to get whatever it is necessary to have that, right? Whether it's more schooling, whether it's more money, whether it's this, whether, you know, whatever it is, right? But we got to let go of that want. Is there anybody here right now that wants something really bad? <laughs> you? Yeah. <laughs> okay, what is it? Do you want to share? Yeah, um, I want to get more in touch like with my friends and things like that. So everybody is changing like to smartphones and I don't have one and I'm saving money to get it. <laughs> okay, well that's different. You're taking action to make it happen. Yeah. But you're not wanting, you're not going, oh, I don't have a phone, but I really want a phone and I, you know, and let me give you an example of what I'm talking about. Those of you that have had me before have heard this example, but I talk about this a lot. About a year ago, a year and a half ago now, about a year and a half ago, I was driving a Lexus. I decided that I didn't want the Lexus anymore. I wanted a new car, a Mercedes. So I figured, oh, okay, I'll just go to Mercedes, right? So I wanted, then I began to look and see all Mercedes and driving around and things like that. And I began to go, every time there was a Mercedes and there was Mercedes is everywhere, right? Because everybody's got one. So I looked, I would look and I'd go, oh my God, I want 
one so bad, you know? And so I called the Mercedes, um, I, I have a friend of mine who delivers my Mercedes to me, so I called him up and I said, I want a Mercedes. I said, I, I, I'm ready to give up my Lexus, I want a Mercedes. And he goes, okay, well, let's see if we can make it happen. At that point in time, I was looking for a certain payment and a certain down payment. I wanted it to happen with, this, I only wanted to pay this much a month and I only wanted to pay this much down, right? And so what ended up happening was, you know, I wanted it so badly, I, you know, I was just wanting it. I was in the want. And so I called him up and he says, Marty, you know, it's not gonna happen. It's, not, it's just not gonna happen. He, the numbers don't fit and it's not going to happen. And I was like, oh my God, what do you mean it's not going to happen? I swear. And I kept calling him back and back and back and trying to make it happen. I was trying to force it to happen and it wasn't happening. And this was in about April. Finally, I went into a meditation and I was like, you're in a stay, you're in a stay. Okay, I'm in the want, I need to let it go, right? Because I'm trying to, I'm trying to steal it in a sense emotionally, right? So it's okay. So I let it go. I let go of the want. I said, okay, you know what? This is going to happen. I put it out to the universe. This is going to happen when it happens. And I know I'm going to get one. Now I change from really wanting to knowing. I'm just, I'm going to get one, but perhaps not right now, but I'm going to get one, right? So do you notice the shifting? I went from the longing, the wishing, the trying to make it happen to going, you know what? It's okay. I let it go. I can't have it right now. It's okay. I'm going to have it. That's just it. I'm just going to have it. And I just don't know when. It's going to be sometime soon, but I'm going to have it. That was in April. 